Welcome to Loon's Leaves, y'all. Today we're doing an update on my IKEA mini greenhouse. All right, thanks for coming back for the update on the IKEA mini greenhouse. I believe this greenhouse is called the Soccer, and I will put the listing on the screen now. I think it is around $20. I can't remember exactly what I paid for it, but again, I'll put the listing on the screen. I purchased this, I think in late September, early October, and had it shipped from Ikea. The shipping was great, putting it together was fairly easy, and if you want to see why I purchased the greenhouse and how I built it, put it together, why I made a lot of the choices inside the greenhouse, go back and watch my first video on the Ikea greenhouse. I think it's my second upload on this channel. It is pretty bad um, as far as film quality goes and everything like that. So I do apologize for that. I am getting better every day at this. And um, yeah, so if you want, this is an update video. This is not an original review on the Ikea mini greenhouse. So this is a bit of an odd angle in my home. We're in a corner of my home. I have recently uh, purchased a plant stand, or I should say I got gifted a plant stand for Christmas that this now rests on. And so I'm gonna walk you through that a little bit closer up so you can see some more of the details of the greenhouse. Before we zoom in on the greenhouse, I do wanna update you on a couple of things. I clean my greenhouse with a microfiber cloth and a plant-based cleaner. I'm sure there are better cleaners out there. This is from Aldi, but none of the cleaner is actually touching any of my plants. I spray it on the cloth first and then wipe down all the surfaces. And to be honest with you, I don't do it very often. I think I've maybe done it two, possibly three times since I purchased the greenhouse. Another update I wanted to talk to you about is that I did change the fan that was in the original greenhouse build. Um, so this is the same greenhouse, just to clarify. But I had this fan in there to kind of circulate air through if you wanna learn about why. Again, I want you to go back and watch that video. And I have switched that out since uh, purchasing the greenhouse. So let's get into it and zoom in on the mini greenhouse. Okay, so this is the whole setup I have going on. This is the setup I think that is most ideal for our situation. This plant stand is also from Ikea, so I will link that down below. The building process was fairly easy and I think it's a very good quality and fits well into the aesthetic of our home, so I would recommend it. Um, it also fits the greenhouse perfectly. It has these little raised lips on the edges here and as you can see the greenhouse just barely fits in there so it will fit the soccer greenhouse on this plant stand i forget the name of it i also have a couple of books and some potting stuff down on the lower shelf just to keep things looking a little more homey and i have a old lamp that i repurposed to put a grow bulb in for these guys here and since it is close by to the window on either side but it doesn't really get any direct light i wanted to give these plants especially because they are a bit more expensive um they're a little bit more high quality i want to give them the best light possible so there is a grow bulb in there i will link it down below inside the greenhouse we have a black velvet alocasia he has popped a new leaf since being inside the greenhouse so that is super exciting in the center here, I used to have a Venus flytrap. Like I said in my first video, um, I was hoping that it would do better in here, and I just unfortunately couldn't remember to feed it enough bloodworms, and therefore it died. I also don't think it was the ideal humidity that it really needs in here, um, because again, I don't keep up with this as much as I hoped I would when I first purchased it. It just gets to be a lot with working full-time and um caring for all my plants at once and things like that life just gets crazy and so we forget to care for our plants and therefore the um venus flytrap did bite the dust so instead i believe i had just purchased the begonia in the last video at the very end of the video i showed it and this is a peperomia as well that has also loved living inside this situation so they kind of fill out the center a little bit and then as you can see, kind of the inevitable here, my Alocasia Frydeck is not doing so well 
in the last video, I had just gotten it um, from a buyer on Etsy. It had died, a leaf, one leaf had died um, in sh the shipping process and it had popped a new leaf. This is in fact the new leaf. It is yellowing a bit. Um, it's looking a little sad. However, it must be doing somewhat okay in here because there is a new little guy that has popped up. So this, I believe, is a separate plant. So there was a little bit of a sprout coming up when I first saw that, uh, or when I first got the plant in the mail, I saw it popping up. So I don't think this is connected to this um, Alocasia Frydeck. So we might indeed get a few more leaves out of this guy. We'll see. It seems to be like as soon as one pops up, another one dies off. I don't really know what's going on. I'm trying my best to fix the situation, keep it really moist in here. It also had a bout of spider mites about a month ago and has since recovered from that. So I think we're doing all right so far. You know, you can't, beggars can't be choosers when it comes to certain plants. Maybe I'm just not cut out for uh, Frydeck parenthood. Um, other than that, it looks very dry in here now because I wanted you guys to get a clear view of the inside of the greenhouse. However, during most occasions, I have this sprayed with a small sprayer. It's very moist. I also have a back here container of water that is usually full. It's been going down obviously as it uh, evaporates and so that also keeps things nice and moist. As far as the build goes, if you didn't watch the first video, the only thing that I really modified on the soccer was the fact that I hot glued it to the base. So this base here and the frame of the um, greenhouse itself do in fact come apart. I didn't want that to happen in case I was moving it in transit and things got a little bumped. Um, so I hot glued that to there. I also added some, a layer of LECA is down at the bottom here. You can't see it because there's another layer of um, dampened sphagnum moss, a few rocks, and other types of mosses as well are inside the greenhouse just to keep everything kind of circulating well. Along with circulation, I did, like I said before, add a fan in the back. It was right back there. And the fan that I originally purchased was just a little too big and a little too strong. So I could see the plants moving quite a bit and I was afraid it would um, kind of hurt them in some ways. It also was just a lot of wind in there for no reason. So I have now purchased, you might be able to see it. I'm going to go inside the greenhouse as well at some point, um, like lift the doors and show you. This is an aquarium fan, so it's meant for uh, reptile aquariums, and it is quite a bit smaller than the original. I can put a comparison photo in now. It also was not that hard to hook up to an electrical system here. So in my original fan, there's batteries, so it was battery operated. I had to go into the greenhouse to physically turn it on. Now I don't have to do that. I can just plug the... I don't know what you would call this. Is this a USB? Yeah, I think it's a USB. I plug this USB into a USB connected outlet and then you can hear the fan a little bit as it turns on, hence why it's not on for this video. It's usually not that loud because I angle the fan into the corner and so it's pulling air not from the side but from the corner, but it got jostled a little bit um, while I was cleaning the sides of the greenhouse for this video. So I will unplug that now but it's a mostly quiet fan, much quieter than what it sounded like just then. If you can even hear that, we'll see in the editing process if you can. So to talk a little bit more about the modifications I made other than hot gluing the bottom and adding some more air circulation going through, I have tried to seal up as best I can the sides of the greenhouse with some window sealant, weather stripping. Um, to keep out any pests and to also keep the moisture up in here. So this side isn't sealed to the glass like this one is. This one's sealed completely shut. This side I don't like to open because I want everything as sealed as possible. So this is how I get in and out of the greenhouse and you can see 
There's some weather stripping on the side here that I didn't peel off the sticker part. And then we also have some more weather stripping along here because with some Ikea products, when putting it together yourself and when it's mass produced, it can be a little bit harder to line everything up. And so there was some gapping within the doors and the frame of the greenhouse. So watch the first video if you want a little bit more details on that and to see how much gapping there really is. But yeah, those are pretty much all the modifications I made. Um, I think it looks really nice. I think it's doing really well. And to talk a little bit about appearances, I have hidden a lot of things back here behind the um, greenhouse situation. So again, you might be able to find a white version of this fan. I can try to link one down below. I was kind of just going for the most effective and the cheapest option I could find. So it did just come with a USB. I'm using an iPhone USB charger um, hooked up into an extension cord. This is, I actually just found it, it fell off. This was a little bracket I had applied to kind of hide this wire a bit. So that will get re-glued back on there. There was a sticker on the back, but clearly it didn't hold as well as I had hoped. So maybe we will Gorilla Glue that onto there. I kept the extension cord kind of wrapped up in case I need it for if we move this stand and it is just command hooked. You might be able to see the um, Velcro command hook. It's command hooked onto the back of this stand here. And then the extra wire for the grow lamp is tucked away in this pot here. So trying to keep everything kind of minimal as well as hide it away so it's not an eyesore because the thing with this greenhouse was it was hard for me to find a place on the windowsill because the lower windows were perfect for fitting the greenhouse, but my dog would kind of lick the sides of the uh, greenhouse and things like that. He would try to um, put toys next to it and things, and I just didn't want it to get bumped off the windowsill by him accidentally. And the upper windowsill wasn't deep enough for that. So this stand works perfectly for the greenhouse's needs. So overall, I love this greenhouse. I would definitely recommend it. It is super affordable. The modifications I made to it are not expensive at all. Um, again, super affordable. And the most expensive part of this project was purchasing the plants for inside the greenhouse, which I had already pre-purchased and just wanted something to keep them a little happy and healthy while inside there. So now I'm going to take you in the greenhouse a little bit and we can kind of look at some things more closely and you can see it without the glare of the glass. Um, before I go, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope this helped you. If you are looking into purchasing one of Ikea's greenhouse cabinets even, or their smaller greenhouse option, which is a lot more affordable.